Now it can also have pendulums or simple harmonic oscillators that work through t torsion, through rotation. In this case, the torsion is given by minus kappa times theta. So this is the torsional constant times the amount of angle. So this is much like, hook, like Hooke's law, f is equal to minus kx, where the torsional constant is equivalent to the spring constant k. And rather than being a linear displacement, in this case it's an angular displacement. So in this case it ends up working in very much the same way. We end up with a period which is equal to 2 pi i on kappa and you can compare this with the normal pendulum where we've got 2 pi m on k. i is the moment of inertia so that's equivalent to the mass and kappa like we said is the torsional constant which is equivalent to the spring constant. Okay, so this is what a torsional pendulum looks like. When it starts moving, the angle here changes and we have a restoring torque instead of a restoring force. So the equations are exactly the same as with a simple pendulum, only in this case we have torques instead of forces and angles instead of lengths. Okay, so you've seen lots of pendulums, which were all types of simple harmonic motion. Another type of simple harmonic motion is a ball rolling along a cycloid curve. Now, a cycloid curve is a really special type of curve. It's generated by rolling a disc along a flat surface and tracing one point on the rim, its path. You'll learn more about cycloid curves in Maths 1b. For a ball rolling along a cycloid path, the period is actually given by period is equal to pi times the square root of r, where r is the radius of the disk that's generated that cycloid curve on g. Another really interesting point about cycloid curves is that if you have two points, say A and B, the fastest way for a ball in any gravitational field to get between those two points a rolling ball, is along a cycloid curve path. So if you're interested in this, I've put a link below this video to an interesting video where this is discussed in a bit more detail. But let's, our, our point here is that we're looking at simple harmonic motion, so let's watch the ball undergoing simple harmonic motion. Okay, now the period here is independent of where on the track I release the ball. So if I release the ball much lower down, that period of motion is actually the same as before. 